This tutorial is about rendering wet asphalt and pavement. But before we make the materials, let's have a look at a bit of theory, because there are several factors that come into play. Reflectivity, the Fresnel effect, the Enstrom effect and wind. The dry parts of the asphalt and pavement are rough, which is why they reflect the incident light at different angles. This type of reflection is called diffuse reflection. The water covered parts are perfectly smooth and they reflect the incident light at the same angle just like a mirror. This type of reflection is known as specular reflection. The next thing to observe is that reflectivity and transparency both depend on the viewing angle. The larger the viewing angle, the stronger the reflections and the weaker the transparency. This is known as Fresnel effect. Then we have surfaces that are covered with only a thin film of water which makes them look darker. This is due to the Engstrom effect, where the light is trapped in the water layer by total internal reflection and eventually absorbed by the surface below. Finally, we should consider that puddles aren't always perfect mirrors, because even a small movement of air disturbs the surface. So let's look at the basic rendered examples. Wet asphalt and wet pavement. Once you understood how these materials work, you can easily modify them for other outdoor rendering purposes. Open Maxwell Studio and load a standard beginner layout using the Windows menu. Drag a 1x1 one one polygon plane from the library to the viewport and scale it up to 6 meters. Import the Crash Barrier OBJ file into the scene. With models done by other people, you may notice some polygon smoothing errors. Change the polygon smoothing angle to 30 in the Appearance tab and click Reset to apply the setting. Rotate and position the crash barrier, right click in the object lister to clone it, then position and rotate it also. Open a metal material with scratches and apply it to the crash barriers. You will get an alert message, so what is that telling you? When a material's texture mapping method is set to meters and uses real-world texture dimensions, the object's UV set projectors must change accordingly. The scratches are shallow and small, so change the bump strength in the global properties and scale the texture up a bit.
Now we want to set up a view that is clipping the plane's edges. So right click in the Attributes tab and create a new camera. And don't forget to change your viewport. To set up the lens, first change the render resolution to HD format. Using a long lens eliminates perspective distortion and a low f-stop provides a nice depth of field. Instead of pushing the lighting to absurd values, simply adjust the shutter speed and ISO to change the scene's brightness, just like you would using a physical camera. Set the camera location and focus target numerically to keep the view perfectly centered and to clip the plane's edges. You can also view and change your cameras in the perspective viewport. Change the environment from none to image based lighting and load a small HDR image to light your scene. Activate the sky in the viewport to make the environment visible. Then adjust the sun's position by changing the HDR image offsets. Now that we have a suitable scene, camera and lighting, right click in the materials list and select new custom. Add two layers and rename all three, asphalt, angstrom effect and water and also rename the material. Disable the two new layers so we can focus on the asphalt alone. Load a free diffuse asphalt texture from Polygon into the Reflectance Zero texture slot, darken it and select Override Map. With Override Map in Materials Global Settings, you can ensure that all textures with that setting are equally transformed. Load the matching Normal Map into the Bump slot and don't forget to switch on the Normal Map setting.
Repeat the process for the roughness slot and invert and brighten the texture. The brighter the texture, the higher the roughness and the less shiny the asphalt. Finally, set the override map to absolute scale and 4x4 four four meters, which is what the texture represents in the real world, like you saw on the Polygon website. Drag the material onto the plane and OK the absolute scale alert message. Select the plane and go to Geometry in Object Parameters, choose Cubic as Projection Method and click Normalize, so the projector knows you are using a real scale material. You can delete the third projector because we don't use it. Start the interactive renderer to preview the material in the scene's context. Now you can activate the Angstrom effect layer and drag the reflectance zero texture from the asphalt layer to the Angstrom effect layer and reduce its brightness. Map the Angstrom effect layer's opacity with a noise procedural, because we want wet areas and puddles in random locations. Set Detail, Persistence and Octave to control the size of the noise granularity. Low Clip and High Clip determine how fussy the wet areas and puddles edges are. To make the procedural's UV projection independent of scale and orientation of objects, select World Coordinates. Start the interactive renderer to preview the material in the scene's context. Finally, you can activate the water layer to set the roughness and refractive index values. Don't forget to select the Force Fresnel option. To simulate a bit of wind on the water surface, we put a noise procedural into the bump slot, this time using texture coordinates. Apart from stretching it using absolute scale, we need to change its texture channel to 1, so it is applied with projector 1 of the plane in order to be independent of the plane's projector 0.
The water should appear in the same location as the angstrom effect, so we also map the water layer's opacity with a noise procedural. Using the same detail, persistence and octave settings. Tighter low clip and high clip values mean that the water covers a smaller area than the angstrom effect to obtain wet edges. Make sure to use the same random seed for the noise, otherwise the angstrom effect and water would appear in different locations. This is why we use world coordinates also for the opacity of the water layer. Start the interactive renderer to preview the finished material in the scene's context. And if you are happy with the result, start a full size rendering. Now we create the wet pavement material. Right click in the materials list and select clone material to make a duplicate, then rename the material and the asphalt layer. Disable the angstrom effect and water layers as before. On the asphalt layer, replace the diffuse asphalt texture with a diffuse pavement texture, then darken it. Deselect normal mapping and load the pavement's bump texture, then set the bump strength to 10. Also replace the roughness texture and make it brighter with less contrast, so the pavement is mostly dull. Keep the invert and override map settings for all maps as before. Drag the material onto the plane and rotate its projector 0 45 degrees. Set the material's texture preview to the diffuse texture so it shows up in the viewport. Start the interactive renderer to preview the material in the scene's context. Now you can activate the angstrom effect layer and drag the reflectance zero texture from the pavement layer to the angstrom effect layer and reduce its brightness.
Like with the asphalt, we have to map the angstrom effect layer's opacity. But this time, we cannot use noise procedural. Because on pavement, puddles accumulate in a particular way, where some of the paving slabs are tilted or depressed. So, delete the noise procedural, paint an angstrom effect layer opacity texture in Photoshop, and load it in the layer's opacity slot, then invert it and select Override Map. Start the interactive renderer to preview the material in the scene's context. Leave the water layer settings and the wind bump map as they are and delete the noise procedural. Now paint a water layer opacity texture in Photoshop. Make sure it covers less than the angstrom effect layer's opacity texture to obtain puddles with fussy edges. Load the texture into the layer's opacity slot, invert it and select Override Map. Start the interactive renderer to preview the material in the scene's context. Now we could start a full-size final rendering, but to make things a bit more interesting, let's scatter some autumn leaves onto the pavement. Import three leaf-sized plain OBJs, rotate them and reset their transformations. One of the planes has inverted surface normals, so I have to flip them in the Objects Appearance tab. Hide the planes and right-click in the Materials list and select New Custom. Load a diffuse leaf texture from Polygon into the Reflectance Zero texture slot and reduce brightness and contrast. Create a new random color modifier and blend it 50% with the texture. Then use hue, saturation and value ranges to vary the leaf's brown, yellow and green autumn tones. Load the matching normal map into the bump slot and activate normal mapping.
then load the matching clipping texture into the opacity mask slot and invert it, because black means fully transparent. Name the material and drag it onto the first leaf plane. Right click in the materials list and select clone material to make duplicates. Then replace the leaf textures with those for the other two leaves. Now select the plane and create a new scatter modifier in the modifiers tab. Change the density to 5 leaves per square meter and select the first leaf plane as object to be scattered. Load the water texture into the density map slot and change it to absolute scale 4x4 4 4 meters so no leaves will be scattered on top of the water. Also, change the scaling and y-axis rotation for more randomization. Right click to copy and paste the modifier and specify the other two leaf planes as objects and change their scatter density. Change the random seed for each scatter modifier, otherwise all leaves would appear in the same location on top of each other. Start the interactive renderer to preview the scattered leaves in the scene's context. And if you're happy with the result, start a full-size final rendering. And now it's your turn. Thank you for watching and listening.